Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's uh, Open a New Go Call. Um, thanks for, for joining. The call is, uh, as usual, public and recorded, so please be mindful of the comments you make and the information you share. So first up, um, today move things a little bit around uh, because there's um, the presentation from Chip on the status of the OMCI LibGo library, which is, uh, as you guys can recall, the base for both the BBSIM now and the Open a New adapter. And uh, Chip has a status update and several other elements that he wants to talk about. So Chip, would you like to share your screen? Uh, sure. Let me stop sharing mine then. Okay. Is that visible? Hi. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to go through since uh, since in two dot nine, you know, we're starting to do some uh, refactoring and some changes. Uh, I've been holding off on uh, several updates to the OMCI library so that two dot eight would stay stable and would not be in, you know, would not change, would be easier to regress. And so for two dot nine, I went ahead and um, there's basically four separate uh, code changes that I did. Um, most of them have very little impact to uh, existing open o OMCI code. So uh, the f one of the first things I did was uh, I broke down the message types.go because it was originally the uh, serializer and decoder for the message types and it pretty much had all the message types in it. And going through it was just very cumbersome and also you know, I had unit test running, but I couldn't really break down uh, what the coverage was per message type. And so breaking it up was the first thing I did. And I just went through a process of splitting them into that into separate files, which you can probably see over to the left. Uh, and then just, you know, with the existing test and make sure that ran stable. So that that was a very easy process to do. And so probably going forward, we can, um, if we have a, a fix or a bug or a, a new capability that affects just a single message type, it'll be very localized in the, the Garrett commit and e more easier to understand what the impact is. Um, the second thing I did was go through, I had about uh, seven or eight message types remaining uh, for the extended message set. So I was able to finish all of those off. So all the, um, baseline and extended message sets are fully supported by the library. And I was able to do that. And that, that'll be zero uh, impact to uh, existing code. So I didn't have to change any um, structs uh, where it would, uh, would, would impact uh, the own new code. Of course, we're not using the extended message set yet. So that, of course, that'll be new code. But um, that, you know, that way, if we decide to support the extended message set and the old and own you support it, then you once you once you determine that you don't have to worry about just doing extended message sets uh, commands for specific things like MIB upload next or uh, any of the software image commands. Um, the other thing I did, and this sort of spawned out of the problem that we had with the uh, class IDs that were uh, it wrong in the uh, uh, 2017 version of G.988 is I went ahead and upgraded and uh, modified the, the tool that I used to parse that document to be able to parse the, the latest G.998, which is the uh, March 2000 or 2020 version. And so that pulls in a few uh, new MEs that they defined. Um, a lot of those came out of the of Verizon changes. And also it um, I was able to improve the uh, parsing so I can, out of the 288 managed entities in the G.988 document, I got all but 35 are, are, are decoding as expected. So that, that should give us coverage, um, you, you know, if we, if we need new capabilities. And I know that Netsia is interested in supporting uh, some of the VoIP related managed entities. And this actually picked up several of those. And then the last change was, is, is while I was going through the 
open on you adapter, there's there's a, a small check in for the uh, Atran um, simulator. I guess, you know, I, I, the Atran has a, a, a Docker image that can basically uh, uh, simulate some of the OLT, I guess, operations. And it did not send out the length field part of the eight byte trailer. And so there was a special check in there uh, if it was from that. So this, this new code will process a baseline frame with just 40, 40 bytes in it. So that, that's considered valid. So that, that should help remove a little bit of vendor specific code out of the open OMU adapter. And, and maybe that will help some other OLT in the future as well uh, that, that doesn't supply that value. Um, and so here's, here's the current code coverage. So I can go through and find out, you know, I I'm, I'm, would like to eventually get everything to 85% or better if that's easy to do. So uh, we're pretty much well on our way. So as, as I have time, I'll try to go back and improve uh, some of the areas where in, in the most used commands to make sure we got high test coverage. And these are the MEs that are no long are not yet code generated. So there's a few DSL ones in there, but uh, hopefully we'll never have to support um, DSL provisioning over OMCI. Um, there's only a few uh, OMUs out there that do that, um, but doing a 48 port uh, DSL um, configuration with OMCI is thousands of commands. So uh, I think most vendors have gone to use a beep and then go over the top of the like a net comp to do that provision. So, and the other one is is there are a few of the uh, uh, CFM and 1731 commands that aren't supported, and that would probably be the first ones I'd see that someone might eventually want as both ever ends up going into like an enterprise uh, configuration. So. Um, probably fixing these would be fairly easy, but I'll probably hold off on that until it's needed. And then the other class are a lot of the uh, uh, EPON related uh, MEs, which I don't, I don't think we'll have to worry about. Um, and so, so part of part of what I did is I also went through the um, Open ONU code, and so these are the managed entities that are actually in use. And so there is actually impact to two places. Uh, one's the extended VLAN tagging operation configuration data that everybody really loves, that really weird table. They, in uh, the latest spec, there's a, a new way to do that. It's a little bit more efficient table, uh, has a little bit uh, more saner operations. It's not as, as uh, it's easier to get right. But uh, the thing is, I doubt anyone will actually um, support that on an ONU probably for some time. But that changes basically two additional attributes. Uh, but there should be no code changes to the existing adapter. And the other one is in the multicast operations profile. And in that, that wasn't previously decoded. Um, so it was it was hand, the, the code was actually hand, hand done. So that's now fully decoded. So that will, um, Basically, uh, the class name has changed slightly, and several, a couple of the attribute names are, are, are different. So, the same, they're same functionality, but not much. Um, I, I think it would be very easy to support that. So, um, I was going to bump the, uh, of course, the version number up when I submit this these changes, and and go to 2.0, so uh, we can implement, we can pull it in whenever we're ready to support it. And so I basically created the uh, uh, two JIRAs. Uh, so JIRA 4337, I can probably have it submitted fairly soon. Um, so it pretty much has all the changes that I've, I've talked about before. Uh, you know, I mentioned I'm just going to bump the version, major version up to 2.0 since it's adding the extended message set. Plus, we're changing one of the uh, MEs that's actually in use. I thought it'd be uh, best to. to Bump the version if that's okay with everyone. And I've cleaned up the README, and there's a few other things um, 
uh, like in the in the comment section of the um, generated MEs, I'm including more information about what what the attributes were. Originally, it was just providing the first first line of documentation for that ME. So I've I've sort of improved that so that um, it now contains a little bit more, uh, you know, more than just a single paragraph. So I'm hoping that helps as, as someone's working with the code, you don't have to jump back and forth uh, to the G.98 document. You have it there available. And then I want, you know, for me, I put it in. So I am putting out the class ID both in decimal and hexadecimal since I sit down when I'm writing a lot of tests, I'm trying to look up, you know, what, you know, what, what is 171 in hex as I write in, you know, I'm writing those texts. So I went ahead and added that capability in there. And that's, so that's uh, 4337. And then the second year I've got, it's for the um, uh, relaxed processing of the new upload next. And so I'm just now starting to look at that. And I think I can probably easily create a, um, you know, a, a a get set function so that on a per message type. So you can say for the lib upload next response, turn on relax decode. And when it does that, um, if it gets a, if you get a, you call the new packet function to uh, do the decode on a received packet, it will return success if there's not a major error. So if there's new attributes that are defined in a new, um, implementation of G.988, the existing code should still work because it'll return okay. And I was going to try to add the, um, the information that there is, is a, a additional layer that like there, you know, there's attributes that weren't decoded. Um, I could think I can provide that as, as, a, as a custom layer and if not as a layer type decode failure, which is supported by the library. So, that would be, this would probably be an example um, of how you can detect that. So you just call this the existing layer. So this right here originally, it would return a packet back, but it would have an error. So in the pre in existing code. So when you did this message, okay, would have been false. So in this case, message, okay, will be true. And you'll have everything that the library knows about those OMCI packets and then you can add this one check uh, to see if there's additional uh, information and of course that's only if you, you turn on relaxed decoding so those those are the scope of the two changes that, I, that i've got planned so i think i'll hopefully have one of the jiras up after i do some more testing uh, within the next several days This is this is great work, Chip. I uh, I couldn't understand. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff in the, in there. Uh, uh, apart from the code itself, also the thing that uh, you can see the G dot nine eight eight in the uh, in the code base. It's it's, it's good. Stuff. It, it's great um, because I find I found myself going back and forth. Um, I think bumping the version to two point oh is the right move. Um, so we know that is a major change, and uh, um, we also move it in the adapter uh, to a major version, uh, which is good. Uh, I think it, I think it's fine. Um, apart from that, uh, I believe that uh, yeah, we do have a few in flight patches uh, and a few things that maybe we can get done on the adapter pretty soon. But I think that uh, around uh, mid September, maybe end of September. Uh, whenever your changes are complete, we can probably go ahead and make the switch. Okay. Yeah, the uh, the biggest one is, of course, that since since if you look at it, um, you know, I've, I've had it having more comments in the generated code. And then, of course, um, that this one uh, message types file that used to be the giant one, it's now bro broke into, uh, you know, get next you know, get current command, the delete message type. So um, it's, it's instead of 4,000 lines, you know, it's 200. So it's easier to, to look at and to clean up 
and and uh, I think that'll help me with, with unit tests so I can uh, try to catch some bugs before they happen. Uh, that sounds good. The the testing uh, the the amount of testing is also very good. We we always should strive for a very high number of testing coverage, but yeah, it's not, it's not easy. Uh, so I'm I'm very happy that you you got that that high number. Okay, and I think that's that's probably about everything. So, are are there any other comments? Or I mean, once I do this, uh, um, there's there's a couple other jurors related to some of the software uploads of d doing multiple images, and also I I can probably it's probably easier to to address those as as this code goes forward if we end end up needing that. So, just trying to trying to be as uh, conform as accurate to the spec as I can. Uh, Chip, uh, I didn't find a uh, wall uh, 4438. Uh, you mean uh, your issue a wall uh, 4338? Uh, oh, oh, for this one right here? Yeah, yeah, I didn't find. Four, four, uh, four, uh, three, three, eight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, I want to say another, uh, another things. Uh, when you uh, finish uh, these changes, uh, I need. I I want to test uh, to multicast servers uh, because uh, you know uh, multicast operation profile is important ME for uh, multicast service. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I think um, I think the multicast should, should uh, I don't I don't think you know the code changes that I had uh, for for the file that changed uh, should shouldn't matter that much. Yeah, uh, okay. I'm sure uh, but I want to be uh, I want to uh, test these changes just. Okay, okay, yeah, what I can do is, is when I get the uh, commit up, I'll make sure I, I add you to the list, uh, the, the review list, that way you can pull down a zip of it or I can uh, provide it and I'll just hold off and, until you give, give a plus one that it, it works as expected. But I, I, I think the main changes would be is, is that, um, I think this class name just changed slightly, and um, a lot of the uh, the words you know had you had like US IGMP TCI. It's now upstream. Yeah. So, so I, I think it'd be a very easy sort of comparison. Yeah. Okay, thank you. To, to, to upgrade. So, so, so no, no behavior. I think has, has changed. Um, so I'll, I'll wait for your okay before I. I think I just uh, want to be sure. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Any Good. other comments or questions for Chip? The Chip says relaxed decoding flag. Where is it set? What is it? Uh, is, uh, it set is it set globally or? No, it, it, yeah, it's it's uh, basically it'll be set on you know per like per basis, so it won't be session oriented. So you can't like do relaxed decoding for an individual O and U. But what what it'll do is is for for the first one, the only relaxed decoding will be on the MIP upload next response, and it'll it will address uh, additional. Um, uh, uh, attributes if they're found in that message. So like in the previous one, um, one of the, the changes, the, the new changes was on the very, you know, they're always added to the end. So they're easy to detect that they're new. So um, these two right here, if you happen, happen to have uh, 
hooked up a ONU that supported this and you got a MIV upload next, it would have failed because these definitions were not defined. Mm -hmm. So uh, this, this gives us maybe a, a, a small window that we can say, okay, new attributes are usually additional um, uh, and don't, don't die if you happen to see them. It's sort of similar, you know, we have the capability to receive either vendor specific or unknown managed entities that an ONU defines and we just, we were, we're able to um, receive them. We of course can't make use of them, but we can, it, it doesn't stop off processing. Okay. And, and probably the, the, there's only three places I think that we will have issues like this. Uh, you know, one's in, in MIB upload next because uh, you're receiving things that the ONU generated. So it could be running on a different version. Um, the other two is either on an AVC or an alarm if they happen to uh, define new or additional alarm bits. Um, so that if, if we think we might need to do relaxed decoding on AVCs or uh, um, alarm messages, uh, we, we can, I can take a look at, at how, how to support that. Okay, but, but it, it will be set globally. We, we have for yes. the whole MIP upload, we will have this, uh, this um, relaxed decoding or, or not, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I would, it would be a relaxed decoding. So you would set it on a specific message type. So you would say specifically, you know, uh, relaxed decoding for, and then you put in the, the value that basically is equivalent to MIP upload next response and set it to, to true. So it would only affect a specific managed entity. It's not like you turn it on and every message type that can be relaxed will be relaxed. Okay. So, and, and I guess technically you could, since you could do it on a function call, you could actually call it, you know, right before you do the new packet call and move upload next response message and then turn it back off after you read it. So you, you, you could do a session control in that method, that way. Okay. See, thanks. Unless, of course, you've got several go routines in flight doing decode, which would be sort of ugly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and in and, and, and 430, this is, I put in the first comment of what I'm trying to think you know, some of my ideas where I think I might be going on this. And I can stop sharing. Okay, thanks Chip. Uh, anything else? Andrea, you will put the presentation, all the stuff in, in, in the, in the... It's already there. Right? It's already okay. there. Everything's there. Yeah. It's here. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so next up, we have a usual update on the. Um, same set of things that we are dealing with since some time uh, about the uh, queue based approach. Um, Grish, I believe the consensus was to wait for uh, for Michael's return on this one. Or has anybody had the time to take a look at the at the code that uh, Grish uploaded here? Uh, unfortunately, not. But Girish. Um, uh, could we think about um, putting this next event handler also in uh, in the Ani Ani G and and Uni machines in the same uh, uh, package, or do you think it would be good to have a separate one for logging? 
Well, uh, this would interact with both uh, ANIG and VLAN FSM. Uh, I just want wanted to keep this separate because it had its own state machine. Okay, that you can uh, trace uh, very particular on, on this machine, right? Yeah. Okay, I see. Hmm. Okay. Um, then uh, I guess uh, if anybody has the time, take a look at this one. We can wait for Michael on the next uh, few things. Um, and this one is uh, uh, holding on as well, Girish, or you started looking into it? No, that is actually part of the previous work uh, that's being done. Uh, so, so the code is already present. That's what you're saying. Um, well, not the entire code, but when when we serialize handling of TP and flow messages, you know, the response is sent back. Only then the next message is picked up for processing. So, uh, yeah, when when we complete, uh, you, you know, serialization of TP and flow messages, this this would be completed. Okay. Okay. On the software update, um, we fixed uh, uh, some issues that were found uh, on the uh, abort. And they were merged in master. Uh, we, uh, thanks to Olga, we do have a patch for Volta 2.8. Uh, I would say that we hold off the 2.8 change, given that it's not as of a high priority, so that we can uh, manage to get everything properly sorted on the download, the status, and things like that uh, with Michael when he comes back. And then we figure out uh, um, the train of patches that need to be merged in the, in the 2.8 version of the adapter. Uh, to make sure all the bug fixes are inserted. Uh, is that okay for everybody? It means you, you also expect that um, the, the, the status handling will be changed in 2.82? Uh, this, yes. Yeah. Yes. Because we, so, so maybe it's not going to be changed because we, we, we didn't port the change to 2.80 yet. But that patch included uh, things like other fixes that Michael did on master. Uh, I looked at it and I tried understanding how to untangle the changes from the download uh, status change as well. But I couldn't, uh, it would have been too much time for me to spend to uh, do those, uh, those untangling. So I just decided to uh, hold off on that. So 2.8 does not have the download change, but doesn't even have the bug fixes. So what I'm saying is we wait for Michael to make sure that everything is uh, in the right order. Uh, and uh, he can easily untangle the changes and we should be able to proceed. And, and furthermore, you, you will uh, actually, that is not the, uh, uh, the final solution Michael provided. And also, you have some ideas to change uh, the status handling. And that's why they're there. We will have changes there, right? That will not be the uh, final. Status. Yes. Maybe, maybe we will not have changes in 2.8. Maybe we will have changes only in master. Uh, to, for my suggestion, I, I, as I said, I don't know. I have to talk to, with Michael on a one one on this. There was some discussion that we started, but then he were left for for time off. So I decided not to change anything until he is away. But then when he comes back, uh, we will change things and update it accordingly. Okay. Any other comment or question? Uh, 
Any update on the Adrian ONU discoveries that you have done, um, Holger? Yeah, I, um, it, it's uh, just about to, to uh, review the, the different provisionings uh, in the scenarios, but uh, actually, uh, the part, uh, apart from the order of uh, provisioning and, and, and uh, different instance uh, uh, numbers, there's no difference. So I wrote a fault report uh, internally in Atran uh, to, to trigger the uh, ONU responsibles and um, to, to include them in the analysis. But uh, this is not uh, finished yet. I, I will also, uh, as I said, I will also uh, find out what are the difference, differences, for example, if this ONU is brought up uh, with the local stack of the Atran OLT uh, versus um, bringing up this ONU ONU with, uh, with the Volta stack. So uh, probably there's also some findings, but actually this, um, actually in, in principle, also the Volta provisioning works. That means when, when, this, when this ONU is freshly provisioned with, with, with the current set of commands, that it works, but only after power cycle and fresh provisioning, there, there seems to be a an, an traffic issue. So um, we have to dig it a little bit deeper there. So actually, the, what the status would be that uh, it is, you, you should keep it out in the regression, leave the circum going you there, and uh, until we, we get this, uh, this clarified, this issue. OK. If you don't mind, please keep the. Um, uh, please keep uh, maybe a Jira uh, and update uh, and uh, the Jira on, on this one uh, so we can keep track of it and how things are going. Because you mean, you mean a separate Jira for the UNU? You? Uh, because, yeah, because this one is just for the for this uh, element in the download uh, side of things and the update or new update side of things for the for the for the stuff that you were talking about uh, uh, which, which is this one this is this most likely needs uh, a separate jira but, but this is a different issue now we had just talked about a six uh, six uh, eleven or new yeah which is what I'm sharing here. Um, oh, Six twenty-one. There's a different issue. That is an XGS uh, oh, okay. issue. Then, so you want to have a, a, a separate uh, Jira's for both issues, right? Um, yeah. So we okay, the six, six, six twenty-one. I wasn't involved. Who was who was involved? Uh, who who discussed this with you? I, I think you Michael. Know. Was it Michael? Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, so maybe we that 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 to me is fairly low priority because okay. I don't even have I don't even have a six twenty one. What I do have is a six eleven. But but uh, regarding the six eleven is is currently also not in the scope of DT, right? They are uh, working with 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 the Sercom ONU currently only for A4. Yes. Mm -hmm. So maybe uh, uh, to this uh, to this discovery, we to this uh, exercise that you're doing, we can find out. Uh, uh, the, if those differences actually matter, if there is anything really important in those elements that uh, we, we we need to fix in a certain way in our in our adapter, uh, given the difference that you have mentioned between the Adtran uh, system uh, that sends the OMCI messages and the, some of the and some of the messages that we send as part of the Volta system instead. So that might be might be interesting to to discover, uh, because as per chip presentation, we are very much consistent with the open OMCI spec. So if there is something different, that uh, I would really like to understand that. Yes, I I have to dig deep a little bit. 
because in the first place it works, you know. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep, yep. Okay, I will keep you updated. updated. Yep, sounds good. Okay. Um, this BBC issue uh, is still on the call. No, uh, Torsten, do you know anything about it? I blanked. I'm blanking on it. Uh, yes, I know. It's an uh, issue where the BBC um, signs the image too early. When uh, the download is in progress, you can see it in the image list already, but this is wrong. Okay. Uh, and it's not fixed. It's not fixed. Okay. I think it's uh, Matteo or an another one. I, I'm not sure who. Okay. Is it we'll, uh, we'll take a look. Uh, okay. We'll take a look. Uh, does any. Does anybody know if uh, Salman is looking into the, the RW Corvo CTL issues? No? Okay, I'll leave it there. Uh, I've pinged him, but I haven't heard from him. Let me maybe ping him again. Okay, I'll ping him again uh on slack to make sure that this is uh this is properly done um on the pm counters i saw himani did some work but uh, that's uh that it, given that it has proto changes it's waiting for the kafka to grpc as well uh just as an update there we're getting pretty close there's a few things that still need fixing but uh we're getting there we're getting there uh, this, uh, I believe, has all been done as part of the discussion we had before. Uh, is there anything that out of this chip that is not covered into this update? Uh, not, let's see. Um, I wasn't sure exactly what the extended get set for unknown elements relates to. Um, I honestly have to say, I don't know. Okay. But Let's leave it there. Yeah, uh, I, I'm, I, yeah. I'm assuming that could be related to um, being able to uh, uh, detect uh, unknown attributes. Yep. Yep. And or attributes and uh, uh, enemies, and you really can't solve that until you go to the extended message set and do individual ones to figure out because you can use that to figure out what the size is. But um, that's not. I'm not. That's not really a library function. That's a you can use a library to do that. Okay. Then let's uh, let's wait until uh, this uh, the, that that change gets in, and then we can uh, re revisit this one as well. Okay. Uh, okay. On the login front, the holder. I saw your you have updated. You're keeping updated the patch. Uh, anything uh, uh, you need on that side? Actually, uh, I, I'm looking for, forward for the day where the gRPC patch is uh, <laughs> merged. That uh, is okay. And this effort can can be skipped. <laughs> but I, I try to to keep it up to date because uh, uh, too big, uh, too much changes uh, would in increase the likelihood of, of errors to be put in during the merge. So I, I try yeah. to keep to keep to keep on head to keep it up to date, up to date this patch until it is merged. Yeah, uh, David can maybe give you a better estimate, but I don't have a date for the merge. Um, nor I think we can estimate one. 
Yeah, I don't have one either. I'm still seeing issues. Um, tests aren't running consistently. And I know um, Harish as well as Ken are working on it. So hopefully soon. Uh, I don't don't have an answer for for you, Holger, unfortunately. Okay. On that mm -hmm. point. I'll try to keep it up to date. As I said. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks. That's that's appreciated. Okay. Uh, on the testing front, uh, Torsten, any update that uh, you want to share? Yes, of course. Um, all combinations of flex is already done because uh, we found another solution to reset the BBSIM between the single test cases. It works fine. It's already in the pipeline and works there too. The abort message during download is also um, mainly done. It's running in the pipeline, but uh, uh, it's adapted to the current behavior of the BBSIM. There's a first uh, JIRA uh, 3302 has to be done by BBSIM. Then I will change or adapt the, the test again to the correct handling. Currently, as I told, it's adapted to the current handling. And the next JIRA, it's close by me because uh, BBSIM uh, does everything fine. It was an error in the OpenONU adapter and it was corrected by Holger. Both tests are running in the pipeline successfully currently. And the next one is uh, abort image activation to lens. This is can relate it. Yes. Next, uh, this is uh, the next what I will do. And uh, actually, I have to adapt our private script to bring up Volta for older releases, for instance, 2.8, we discussed today. And yes, mm -hmm. that's all for today. Okay. Uh, that was also all I had on the agenda for the day. Uh, is there anybody that needs uh, anything uh, to be discussed uh, within the team. No. Okay, uh, then if not, I think we can get uh, 15 minutes back of our day. Uh, let's uh, uh, proceed with the great work and um, I'll talk to you again next week. Thanks, everybody. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.